Uh, my name is Yoho. I'm a research engineer on the project. My name is Wayne. I'm the safety driver, and I will not be driving it today. <laughs> um, so I guess without, oh, oh yeah, so let me give you kind of an outline. So we're going to show you a bunch of different urban driving scenarios. We're going to interact with other cars, pedestrians. We're going to see some crosswalk behaviors, four-way stops, as well as traffic lights, and sort of different driving profiles kind of within that range. So without further ado, I think we should get started. So let's go autonomous. So in order to do that, I'm going to take the gear shift here, and I'm going to pull it down into L. Now that starts a, a diagnostics check that makes sure that every, all the systems and subsystems are functioning correctly. And they are. I can tell that by the head-up display up there. I don't know if you can see it from back there, but I'm getting yeah. green lights up there oh, yeah. to tell me that okay. everything is good. So I'm going to hit the OK button here on the steering wheel, and we are now autonomous. And from now until the rest of the ride, the car is going to be making all the decisions about driving. It's going to be knowing where to stop, when to stop, how long to stop. It's going to be looking around it and making sure that traffic is okay and if there aren't any pedestrians around here, then it can proceed. Can I grab your names, by the way? Uh, Sam Abu al Samad. I just think the first name is, okay. just so I remember. And your name? Joanne. Joanne, nice to meet you guys. Okay. Now, as far as the route goes, um, I think uh, Greg mentioned that you're um, not using the GPS, so uh, I presume you uh, pre-programmed the, the route uh, into the vehicle and it's well, just following it's, it's not really pre-programmed. <laughs> so, so we have a really detailed 3D map of the environment around us, mm -hmm. okay? And we have the road network of this area, right? And, and we've asked it, asked it to sort of do like a simulated, uh, like 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 taxi mission. Okay, it's going to drive one place and then drive back so, to where we are. So here. do you do you program just program way, waypoints in, and then it, based on what it knows about which roads are one way and two yeah, way and yeah, so yeah, on, it's and constantly recomputing the route. So it's okay. not like pre-programmed. It's like all right. it's, it's doing all that online. So all you, all you program though is the waypoints of where where you want it to yeah, go. That's correct. Right, okay. and then. You know, just to get you guys all through, we, we, we've kind of kept it to this campus right. so, so that we, we can go all the way down there and then back again in a relatively compact amount of time. I really awesome. want to show you guys a lot of different scenarios. So coming up here is actually pretty interesting. We've got a four-way stop here. We've, we've got a car coming up here, and you can see he didn't even come to a complete stop, but we're still going to wait for him to clear through the intersection before we proceed. I noticed the blinker is on. Did you put that on? I did not. Now, the car does that itself, and in fact, it turns it on quite a bit earlier than what a normal person yeah. would turn it on. We do that on purpose. We do that so that the people around us are very well aware of what our intent is. And we follow the rules of the road. Um, we're supposed to use our blinkers, but not everybody does that. Uh, likewise, as you see here as we come to a four-way stop, we'll actually come to a complete stop and then proceed. Uh, not everybody does that as well. So part of the reason that, that we're showing you this route um, is because it's our development route. This isn't a demonstration in terms of, in the sense that uh, we have everything under our control and things are scripted. Um, we're out in the public here. We have no idea what people are going to do on this lap. There is one exception, and it's coming up right here. Um, these folks in the crosswalk here are going to activate the crosswalk. Now, we do that on purpose. We, we want to show you the behavior of pedestrian. But because things are unscripted, we're never sure that there's actually going to be a pedestrian. So this part of it is we've done ourselves. Well, you'll notice the car waits until they are all the way away. And until those lights are off, right? So we're going to sit and wait for the blinking lights to go off, and then we're going to continue. So that's the law. Interesting. One is off, one is on. And now the people behind us are impatient. So they go around. So the car will wait until all the flashing lights stop. Until the stop. flashing yep. lights stop. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, going back to the four-way stop scenario, you know, if you had, uh, if you were, if you can't, like it might be stuck it's, on. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess maybe we should just proceed. Yeah. Yep. Over here. You just took over. I did. Okay. How did you do that? So all I have to do to do that, in that case, I just stepped on the gas. Okay. Um, I can also do it with stepping on the brake. Or I can also do it if I grab the steering wheel. And now are you, did you have to re-engage? Yeah. We're, we're already back in. Yeah, we're so already Because coming. you hit OK? Yep, all I did is push the OK button. Yeah. So again, the, the four-way stop scenario, if someone else approaching the four-way stop had, uh, does a rolling stop and you know, you've got the right of way, you, you arrived first and you've got the right of way, will the vehicle sense that the other vehicle is still moving and, and wait? and allow it to go first even even though it has the right of way. Yep, so so we're sort of constantly sort of yep reevaluating. So this is a case up here that um, we have somebody walking in the middle of the road. 
I'm going to go ahead and take control because I don't know what he's going to do. And I'd rather not make a test out of this. Is this part of your demo or just a it coincidence? Is this is a complete coincidence. Okay. This underscores the fact that we are dealing with the public here. Now I'll go back to autonomous mode. And you hear an audible signal each time yep. you go in? There is, yeah. You've noticed the, you've heard the beeps. Um, there's there's a couple ways that I can tell what, what state we're in. One is I look at where the gear shift is and I, and I know that now is, is autonomous. Um, I've got the head up indicators. Um, the flashing green lights tell me that all the subsystems are functioning. The solid green lights like that tell me that we are autonomous. So for this part, we kind of like you guys to just sit back and relax for a second and, and try to see if you can tell the difference between the car driving the car or Wayne driving the car. So were you guys involved with some of the testing that took place at M-City during the winter? We were. Mm -hmm. And how, I mean, how well did it really work in those conditions? So that was one of our earlier tests in, in the weather. Um, and the car performed exactly what we expected it to do. Um, I'm going to pay attention to what's going on here. Yep. So, so here, here we've got sort of an interesting situation. There's a four-way stop. Okay. There's a pedestrian that's, that, that, that's, that's coming across, right? Nope. And, and, and we're going to wait for him, right? So uh -huh. um, we're going to wave him across so that he knows that he's got the right of way right now because we yield to pedestrians. And so now we're going to wait for him to get all the way up under the awning before we go, okay? And, and meanwhile, we're going to get another pedestrian coming in from the left, and so we're going to wait for him as well. And so that's just kind of the stage of development that we're at right now. We want to be really conservative, make sure to yield to everyone that's around us, um, and, and, you know, just play cool. So we've got somebody behind us that may be an aggressive driver. We may not know that we're waiting for this pedestrian. So, and so now good. he's okay. he's sort of well enough away that, that we're going to continue driving. So is there you're looking for a minimum distance from the curb, you know, for to make sure that they're they're not going to immediately turn around and go back yeah, again yeah, before yeah. you start. Yeah, we, we've seen some people do some pretty crazy things, so yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> we just we just want to make sure that that uh, you know there's not going to be building building in a buffer into the yep. control strategy. I think about places like New York City where you'll never get anywhere if you're not pushing. Sure, sure. <laughs> yep. yep, and you know, um, th that's on our roadmap for getting to 2021, <laughs> right? Is, is, is to be able to handle sort of increasingly more complex scenarios. But that may be where you don't want to start your development. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and that's, that's why it seems to me like it might make more sense for autonomous vehicles to initially be deployed in scenarios where they don't have to mix with human driven vehicles um, rather than you know immediately dropping them into the, the normal environment right. um, you know until until you've got a greater degree of confidence in the, the system and its decision making ability yeah so I mean actually here's a really good example of a case where we're going to interact with some human drivers you've got a left turn across traffic scenario coming up here You've got some cars that are oncoming, so the car has to sense those cars and figure out how far it is, how far away from the intersection they are. And so what we're going to see is when the light turns green, we're going to yield to those cars. Okay, and, and so that's an example of how we're currently sort of interacting with those cars, and we're, we're sensing them live right now. Um, and so, yeah, so see all those cars over there? We're going to wait for them to drive through the intersection or turn right, whatever it is that they decide to do. Once they're clear of the intersection, then we're going to resume. This is actually one of the most challenging scenarios in, in traffic. It, it's not a protected left turn. You don't have a green arrow keeping the cars coming the other direction from going. And, and so now um, we're, we're looking at those cars that are down there, and we're trying to decide if, you know, if we have enough time to get through the intersection. Oh, of course we do. Yep. Okay, proceed. Is there one sensor that is sort of the primary with the others being backup? 
Is it the cameras or the LiDAR or the radar? Uh, I don't know. We're, we're, we're using all the sensors pretty yeah, much, and, and we're trying to exploit the different strengths of all the different yeah, sensors, right? right? So, uh, but you're not you know, leading with one no, over not, another. No, not necessarily. Okay. It, it truly is a combination of all the sensors. And, and fusing the signals to create a, a holistic view of the, the area around the vehicle. That's right. We call it perception. Uh -huh. We call it coming up with that understanding of a situational, situational awareness. Right. And speaking of situational awareness, um, you know, obviously, you know, you know about the, you know, the Google bus crash um, earlier this year, and then of course the, the Tesla incident. And it seemed to me uh, like one of the things that could have could have helped in those situations um, is having V 2 V communications that could signal intent. Uh, so, I mean, you know, with the kind the kinds of things that you would, you know, with human drivers, you can have nonverbal signals. Like earlier, yep. you know, you were waving to a pedestrian to go ahead. Right. You know, being able to do that, um, you know, ha having the autonomous vehicles, having vehicles signaling that intent to each other, seems like oh, it, it could be helpful. Oh, well, it certainly would be helpful. Yep. The issue is you can't ever rely that it's always there. Right. Yep. So, so you're going to have to solve so, the but, problem but, anyway. 